Hey guys, hope you're doing well. I just wanted to hop on, do a video, a tribute video, and um, I hadn't been able to do this for a few days. <laughs> As a lot of you guys know already, Mel Thompson passed away on Monday. Um, I have Harvey here if you guys hear anything. He's on the floor for support <laughs> because I know how hard this has been for all of us and how sudden it was. And I just, my heart goes out to Puffin, her husband, her kids. Today I wanna to talk about Mel in the way that I knew Mel. And I think that's a way to celebrate her. And I feel like if you guys have anything that you wanna share in the comments about celebrating her and remembering her, everything that she's done, I feel like a lot of us are in the same boat where we feel like we can't quite articulate the impact of someone like that in our lives. I remember when I met Mel for the first time, um, <laughs> you know, YouTube way, it was her commenting on one of my reviews and I was a new creator then, I was probably six months into it. Um, and I saw a comment that came in from Mel and I looked at it and I was like, that's really Mel Thompson commenting on my video. <laughs> like, I was so excited. I thought maybe it was like a fan page, like maybe it was someone that really loved Mel that had like a channel for her and they were just commenting on my video, but no, it was actually her. And I was over the moon, like starstruck that somebody I had watched and admired was commenting on my stuff. And it was like, then she added me on Instagram and I was like, whoa, like this is so cool. <laughs> this person is adding me. And never did I think that it would, <sighs> never did I think it would turn into the friendship that it did. One of the first things that we connected on was our dogs. I'm gonna show you a clip here of her sending me a message and for those of you that don't know, I'm Canadian. I'm a Canadian creator. A lot of the friends I have on YouTube are American, um, other creators around the world from all different sorts of places. But the, the American creators that are my friends, we chat on text message and iMessage and Marco Polo because we just can't see each other in person, right? She sent me this video one day, introducing me to her dots. Are you sleeping, Charlie? Yeah, did I just wake you up, huh? Yeah. I just got my hair cut off. It's all gone. Yeah. <laughs> Normally she has really long hair. Now I can get a little mohawk. Yeah. She's the sweetest thing in the entire world. Do you love your mommy? Yeah. You love your mommy. <laughs> she will stay in bed all day long. As long as I let her. Oh, I hear the other one coming. The ragamuffin. Come here, ragamuffin. Hi, buddy. Do you want to say hi to Jenna? Hey, that was not a nice answer. <laughs> hey, buddy. So this one is Diesel. He is a soft-coated Wheaton Terrier. Come here. Come here. So this is Diesel and Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. You want to sit? Sorry, I've got pillows and everything everywhere. Down. Char Diesel. Sit. Stand. Damn, a good boy. You gonna do it? <laughs> pew pew! You gotta do it right at the time. Pew pew! Hey, I don't have a treat, do I? Oh, you still did it. That's a good girl. That's a good girl. You want a treat? Okay, let's go get a treat. Come on. You coming? Let's go. Mel absolutely loved Harvey too, and you can see that she loved Charlie and she loved Diesel so much. So, this guy's been so sweet these last few days, of course, because dogs are just like that. They're intuitive and we just don't deserve them. But that was one of the things that Mel and I connected on was our dogs. Another thing she always used to tell me was that she absolutely loved my hair. It was so random, <laughs> but it was so funny. At the same time, we had this little joke that, I don't know, the communication must have been a little mixed, but she said, I love your hair. And I said, thank you so much. Like, you know, it's fake, right? And she's like, really? Like it's a wig? I'm like, no, 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 it's not a wig. <laughs> the color isn't real. And she's like, oh, cause I was about to say like, I want to go to that place where you got your hair. <laughs> like that's the kind of stuff that <laughs> makes me laugh now. 
we had connected with our dogs and, you know, talked about our dogs a ton. And then I got probably one of the worst, like, hate comments in my life that happened at this point in my career of being a creator. This was an account that was fairly large, a lot larger than me at the time. And they had said something on Instagram and it was polarizing. It wasn't true. It was just some kind of drama that was coming my way. And it was from a review I had done. And then with that came all of the followers from that account. And that was something that I just didn't know how to handle. I didn't know how to block people at the time. <laughs> I was so new. I didn't know how to delete. I didn't know anything and just coming like all sorts of hate. And at the exact moment that this stuff was happening, it must have been that Mel must have seen it because she reached out to me and she's like, how are you doing? And I just didn't know what to do. I said, I can't even open up my phone. Everything is crazy. I don't know what to do with this. I think Tennessee time might be either central or Eastern, but I'm in Manitoba in Canada, so it's central. And it was like 11 p.m. and she was talking to me all night, making sure I was okay. I said, okay, girl, like you can go to bed. <laughs> you have four kids, you need to sleep. And she's like, are you okay? And she talked to me for like three hours after that. She was just unbelievable. That's just how she was. She'd always say like, how's my Jenna doing? I'd say, good, how's my Mel doing? And she'd say, totally fine, no complaints. And all of us know who watched her that she had a lot. If she wanted to complain, she could very easily and it would be justified. But like her health had taken a turn, you guys know. She shared a lot with us. And I feel like when I would talk to her, I would ask how she was doing. Like, is there anything I can pray for? Is there anything I can help you with? Like, can I just be there, a listening ear? And she's like... Sure, and she would say little bits, but she wouldn't ever talk too much about herself. She always felt like, but what do you need? What can I help you with? It seemed to be right off the bat that she felt like a safe place to me. Like, I remember chatting with her for the first time. She wanted to collaborate with me on a video. And this was within the first year of knowing her. And I said... <laughs> thank you so much, but I'm not going to do that. Like, she's like, well, why not? And I said, because the time she had like 50,000 subscribers. And I think I had less than 5,000. And I was like, I like, this is not going to help you. <laughs> like, I have some followers too, that I love and I respect. And I think that like some of them might already watch you. Like, I just, is this going to be a mutually beneficial collaboration? And she's like, what? <laughs> like, she just didn't seem to comprehend that. She was like, I, I want to do a video with you. Like, I'm not thinking about anything else. And I said, well, I just, I don't want you to feel used. Or like, she's like, I asked you. Like, that's literally how she was. She was just so completely, unconditionally sweet, kind, didn't want a single thing back. And right away, we were planning our collaboration I just started, I found myself just talking about stuff. I felt like I could talk to her about anything. She was just like this safe place. She was, it was something that I just knew right away I was attracted to. Like, this is someone you can trust. And she never told anybody anything. Like, to this day. I don't know if you guys believe in this kind of thing. But Diesel, one of her dogs, passed away not that long ago. She was distraught. She loved that dog, as did so many of us, her whole family, of course. And when he passed away, she had a really hard time with it. But I sort of feel like he passed away so that she wouldn't be alone in heaven. I really thought I could do this without tissue. <laughs> like, oh. Anyways, what I was trying to say was that I feel like Diesel left first because he could help Mel, someone to hug, 
someone to comfort her when it was her time. And then Charlie is back here to help with her family. I just feel like that's got to be part of the plan. I don't know. Maybe that's silly. I had lost a family friend in 2020. Um, he had cancer. It was terminal. He chose to do medically assisted. So for those of you nurses out there, medical people that know about that, I'm not going to go into that too much here, but if you know, you know, kind of thing. And it was so hard because it was for the first time I, we had a family friend who was basically family choose to do that. And it was really hard. He wanted to see us on one of his last days. And I remember telling Mel, I don't know if I can be brave enough for that. Cause how do you say goodbye to someone that you know is gonna die? And she said, it's not goodbye. It's see you soon. And we had this discussion of like, is it harder to say goodbye to someone that you know is gonna die? Or is it harder to say goodbye to someone suddenly? And she said, um, both are hard, but we all go to a great place. So it makes it easier. Another memory I have of her was when she sent me a message on polo one day she had these crazy long extension like fingernails they were like <laughs> edward scissor hands i'm currently taking a break because 4k you have to your camera overheats and um i'm doing <laughs> I i'm doing my makeup <laughs> with these glue to my my fingernails and it's really hard to keep poking myself and I have like crap all over my shirt because <laughs> I keep dropping shit. Okay, I literally thought you were Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> I feel like Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> and she was laughing and she was having, <laughs> she had filmed her entire face with those nails. And I remember watching that video if I can find it, I'll link it for you. But it was, it just showed like her fun side, which is always something we saw, even when she, and I know that we can connect that way too. Like anyone that watched her would know that she would have such a rough day, but then she'd pick up her makeup and she would film and be so positive and so <laughs> funny. You sometimes would just never know that things were going on. The final message I want to share is one that I shared on my Instagram and it just really shows who she was. Um, wishing me a happy new year and that everything in this year would be better, <laughs> easier. Um, it breaks my heart watching it now because she didn't know then what would happen. Happy new year, beautiful. I hope that 2021 brings you everything that you could possibly ever want. Nothing bad in 2021. I am putting it into the air. It's gonna be amazing and I can't wait. I love you. Happy New Year. But I do believe that she's in a better place and I feel horrible for her family so I'm gonna to continue to pray for them and just lift them up. So if you believe in that kind of thing, I hope you would too. I don't know how to say goodbye to Mel. What I do have is the memory of her talking to me about my family friend. And so I know what she would have wanted and that is, it's not goodbye. It's see you soon. Thank you, Mel, for everything you've done for me, for everyone in the community. We all miss you. She's always spoke so highly of her viewers, and I want her viewers to know, my viewers to know, she loved you guys. She really did. And she had such joy in doing what she was doing. She was a mentor. She was a friend. She was someone I really, really treasure and always will. Thank you so much for watching. To Mel, I love you.